Yitro. <clears throat> giving of the Torah. Men had shown Gereret Mirror Mo. We have sp spoken many times. <clears throat> As the Oiftu from Matan Torah, that the accomplishment of the giving of the Torah is to forbinden und vereinigen to join and to unify Milo mit Mata, the highest worlds with the lowest worlds, like, like we're learning in this. Un Mata mit Mila, and also <clears throat> the lower worlds with the upper worlds. Far Matan Torah, before the Torah was given, was given the Gezerah, there was a spiritual decree. Hashemayim, Shemayim la Hashem, for Oretz Natan Livinei Adam. The heavens belong to God, and the earth belongs to man. Ruchnius mit Gashmius, Zayin Geven Tzvei Bazundur Avelti. Spiritual and physical are two different worlds. Velcher Haben Zich Nitkekent Tzu Zamen Kumen, which could not come together. It was a person who wanted to be spiritual, he wasn't physical. He had to be a spiritual person. <coughs> and then you had to devote your life to spiritual things, and that's it. A physical person was a physical person. He could be physical. Right? Even you have rabbis in the congregations. There, were, <clears throat> right? there was no such thing back then. Nowadays you can have a rabbi that he's a spiritual person, a very high, holy person. And he can also be occupied with people and in the world. And dealing with the, before that, before the Torah was given, there was no such thing. Either there were spiritual people that were devoted totally to spirituality, or there were physical people. <coughs> there wasn't both. To a certain degree, that exists today by other religions that don't accept the Torah. You have people that they're the priests, they're the pastors, they're the holy men, they're the gurus, they're the this. And their whole life is just that. That's all they do. They're just spaced out their whole life. And they're in there, and they're in the water. <clears throat> At least that's where it's supposed to be until they reveal a lot of times what they're really doing. But that's where it's supposed to be. <coughs> <coughs> These people are holy, they're spiritual, they don't get married, they're removed from the world. Nothing to do with family, no, no, no bills to pay, no nothing. Right? That's, well, that's sort of what the way it was before the Torah was given. Before the Torah was given, spiritual people were spiritual, physical people were physical, and that's it. Right? You wanted some advice, you went to a spiritual person. About spiritual things. <clears throat> By Matan Torah was what God <clears throat> ended this. 3,300 years ago, <clears throat> it was impossible to be physical in the physical world and also spiritual at the same time. When the Torah was given, <clears throat> this all changed. The Aniyah Matchil, and God was the first one to begin. God himself came down into the world and spoke to all the Jews. Un had given Yidin them koach. That by means of this, God gave Jews the power during Kiyomah Mitzvahs by doing the commandments. That's what makes the Jews holy. The commandments to far heften un far einitzkin. The Jews have the power <coughs> to unify the earth with the heaven. That's the idea of the commandments. What are the commandments? Physical things. That it's purely what God wants you to do right now. God is commanding you, right? This is God's will right now. You're not just linking yourself with the heritage of the Jewish people that we have done for so many great years. And this is our, <clears throat> this is our religion and this is our belief. No, that's, that could be nice. That's those nice things. It's true. But the fact of the matter is that's not the, dy the, the dynamics of Judaism. The life of Judaism is... There's God. He's creating me and everything in the world right now. There's nothing in the world that's not being created by God, the creator. And this God, the creator, he's, he gave the Torah. In the Torah are values. And God also gave commandments. And the commandments, God is commanding right now. This is God's will right now. Just like God is creating me right now. And it's God's will that I should have two eyes and I should stand on the feet and there's the law of gravity. Also, God right now wants me to use my free will and take these to fill in and put them on my arm. And to give charity. <coughs> and to have tzitzis. And to, have, and to put them on and to keep Shabbat. This is God right now, what he, he wants right now. That's what happened in Mount Sinai. God came down into the world. <coughs> the river, hub and the mitzvahs, therefore the commandments from the 
<coughs> for Avos, Avra Mitzvah Yaakov, before the Torah was given, Chach Zehab and Gatan Kama Mitzvahs, even though they did certain commandments, they really did physically certain commandments. As Nitgahad them Koach, so Durach Dringen to permeate with holiness the physical things which they used to do their commandments with. <coughs> <clears throat> with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, <clears throat> the things that they did, the physical things they did in the world, they didn't remain holy. <clears throat> As Oich Zei, Zolan, Veren, Halik, that the things that they did in the world would be holy. For instance, it says that Yaakov put sticks in front of the, the sheep in order to make them multiply, and that was like tefillin, right? But they didn't remain holy. We'll see. <clears throat> Well done, because then, before the Torah was given, is nach nid given meglechet. It was not. It was impossible to forbidden to join holiness, <clears throat> the holiness of spirituality with the physical world. <clears throat> so that's the whole idea of matan Torah. There were commandments. There's no such thing in any other religion or any other nationality as commandments. There's, they have rituals, they have, they have their customs, they have their, what is heritage, they have their ho holidays, <clears throat> symbols, <clears throat> whatever. But there's no commandments that God right now wants you to do this. <clears throat> physical, exactly this physical thing. The matara from mitzvahs, the commandments, uh, the, the, the purpose of the commandments that the fathers did, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, was mainly to draw revealed godliness into spirituality. In other words, they made godliness accessible in the spiritual worlds. They opened the door, if you want to call it. Thus was they haben ya getan mitzvahs begashmiyos. There's these commandments that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did <clears throat> physically in the world is as vile because. Is the Zion and Gavin Amerikaba because they were a vehicle for God. Like we talked about for, before, <clears throat> just a couple of minutes ago, right? There's some people that are vehicles for music, some people are vehicles for physics, right? It just flows through them. <clears throat> Gen generally speaking, that's like doctors. They say, this is, oh, this is doctor somebody. What does it mean, doctor? He himself, he's a person that heals, right? A normal person. <clears throat> it's going through his mind all the time. Even in the body. and Gaven, the Avram Yaakov, were so surrendered to God, to the truth. There were no, there was nothing in themselves. All they wanted to do was just, <clears throat> right? There's people, especially you see this in music, but there's also in sports, right? There were people in jazz and things like this. They would just they would just play all the time. There was never right. You see it in physical world all the time. And it's quite quite uh, remarkable. There's some people that are just totally devoted to music, to their instrument, and, <clears throat> and it just flows to them. They don't know anything else. I mean, they do know. You could talk to them about other subjects, but that's not where they're at. Same thing. The Abbas, the Havdil. They were only interested in what does the Creator want now? Why is the Creator creating me? What does He want from me? How am I supposed to improve the world right now? <clears throat> there were no real existence in themselves. They were always thinking about the creator, something bigger than themselves. Right again, just the same way as a, a chariot, a car, right? You sit in a car, you have a bicycle, right? Is a nine yeda bazundra battle zum rotzon from writer. The a bicycle, right? It's, it's totally negated to the will of the one who's riding it. The bicycle doesn't do anything on its own or the car unless something's wrong. Therefore, therefore, had Zayn Avoda, Ruchnius, that was Abraham and Yitz, Isaac and Yitzchak. They were total vessels for godliness. <clears throat> this permeated their whole being. Bis das had zich or royce gezakt oich in a davar gashmi until it was expressed even in physical things. The intention is not <clears throat> to make the physical world holy. 
They were not interested in making the physical things were only a means <clears throat> to express their spiritual feelings, to express their yearning for God, like we said. The gashmi, the physical world, is given nitmer oisdruk. It's just an, a means <clears throat> for them, inyan aruchmi, for the spiritual thing which they felt. Therefore, is demo, there, therefore, it was by the Avos, Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov, <clears throat> not so relevant what type of a physical thing that they used. There were no real specifications in what, what they used, right? The, the, the knife that Avram used to, 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 to go up to the mountain and sacrifice his son, that knife did not become holy. The donkey that he rode on, right, was not, didn't become a whole. <clears throat> Visa is you do it like it's known that Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov Avinu had, for instance, we said like the sticks that he put before the um, the the uh, sheep. And Mamshech given Hamshech as Elyonos was mir itz Nachma and Torah as a Mamshech during Tefillin. That Yaakov he drew down into the world by putting the sticks in front of the sheep, the same thing that we draw down now when we put on Tefillin. <clears throat> and so it is also with the other commandments. But nevertheless, those sticks did not remain holy. The kegan, I mean, maybe if somebody could find it, it would have some sort of a, you know, of a, a, a what do you call it? A, a, a memoriam value, what do they call it? Like if somebody found the pen that Shakespeare used to write his uh, things, that would be a very valuable thing, right? To find the pen that he used, the very, but it wouldn't be holy. The same thing with Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov. If somebody could find these sticks that they use or whatever, <clears throat> so good, it would be very interesting, but it wouldn't be holy. And it would be interesting, it would be oh, value. who knows how much it would be worth if you could ver verify something like that. <clears throat> but they would not be holy. On the other hand, to fill in, which are put on by a simple Jew, doesn't know anything. A simple Jew, don't, they're holy. <clears throat> which is not the case by the commandments. The commandments, which we do now after Matan Torah, they have the power to draw down holiness even in the physical world. On their Gashmi align as the Gashmi that the physical world should be holy. That's the thing of the holy, that's why the holy temple, the place of the holy temple is still holy, even though there's no temple there. Because it remains there. <clears throat> therefore, therefore, the place is holy, and therefore, therefore, is the Rova Mitzvah, the most of the commandments, if not all of them, there has to be a physical thing and physical conditions and 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 criterion in order that it should be to do the commandment. You can't do the commandment everywhere you want. You can't do the commandment any time that you want, etc. Commandments are very limited, but it's pure godliness. <clears throat> Their koach, the power, was his gegeven, gabor, which was given to the mitzvahs through matan Torah. That was the thing of matan Torah. Azazel and Mamshech, that the commandments will draw down the holiness, even in physical things. This comes from <clears throat> Elokus was his hecher from Matul Maila, a level of godliness which is higher than up and down. <clears throat> In other words, the spiritual worlds, they're called up. And the physical world is called down. Right? When we say a person dies, his soul goes up to heaven. But the level of godliness that was revealed on Mount Torah, this is the aspect of God that creates up and down. It's not up and it's not down. No unlimited. Unvile air is their oy emissor believable because God is the real, true, unlimited one. Was his nit begrenet that God is not limited in any of the categories of up or down. <clears throat> Therefore, God gives us the power also that we, through Matan Torah, and by because God Himself came down, that we can join <clears throat> both opposites together, up and down. Them from this, it's farstandik, it's understood <clears throat> that the accomplishment of the commandments which we do now after the giving of the Torah is nid blois, it's not only vase bavirkin, which they have an effect also in the physical world, <clears throat> and the physical world should be holy, but even more, the commandments themselves, zainin <clears throat> in a fil hechra madrega are much, much higher, the mitzvahs are a higher level than what the, the Avost, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov did. 
maybe you can say that our commands we do it are the same thing as theirs, but <clears throat> now they maybe have more details. But it, uh, when the Torah was given, the effect was different. Says the Rebbe, no, that's also true. That's true, but also the commandments themselves are higher. The mitzvahs was mehad getan farmat and Torah. The commandments which were done before the Torah was given, zayin and gaven begrenister, they were limited in the getter from Mila, v'yaben nit gehat zich the koach. They, the, the commandments that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did, or the prayers that they had, it was, they were <clears throat> relegated, limited to being spiritual. They had to be spiritual. They did not, <clears throat> they could not be physical. Or the Rebra, therefore, Hobbins, they knit, they can't, for Einzikin, Mitkashmish, therefore, they couldn't unify with the physical world. <clears> Over <throat> the mitzvahs, with the mitzvahs which are after the giving of the Torah, Haben in Zich, the Koach have the power from the essence of God. Thus, air is nid mugba, which God is not limited. <clears throat> in kind of Hagbalas, without any, with any sort of limitations of up and down. So when a Jew does the most simple, seemingly meaningless and non-spiritual commandment, this really is uniting the world with a power which is even above spiritual. Which unifies spiritual and physical together in the world. Okay, what's the, what does the Rebbe want to do by this? This is th these are sort of revolutionary ideas, especially because you can't really see what the Rebbe is talking about. <clears throat> right? Once a person does a commandment, it doesn't all of a sudden you know take his headaches away and makes him younger, and all of a sudden his, his, he has a better sense of humor or something. I don't know. It makes a more successful businessman. You can't really see immediately any <clears throat> result, any change. But the fact of the matter is, is that's what the Rebbe is saying. That is what gullus is. That's what exile is. That we can't see or feel true good. That all we can feel is the confusion <clears throat> of the world and, or our own egotism. And so that is exactly that what exile is. Exile is we don't see the effect of what the commandments are. We don't see godliness. We don't see anything unusual in the Torah. We don't see it. But the fact of the matter is, is that the, 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 the <clears throat> revelation of godliness, of good in the Torah and the commandments is infinite. That's the whole, it, it's, the, it's the game changer. It makes the whole world suddenly a different, right? A different world. <clears throat> It's just a totally different world. <clears throat> it's like if you, let's say there's a big, very important person, right, a big uh, uh, rabbi, whatever, and they catch him, you know, playing with his uh, cellular phone, right, in the big judge or something. He's playing with his cellular phone, he's playing snake or whatever they have, these little, all of a sudden somebody says, hey, you know where you are? Oi! All of a sudden he realizes where he is. Oi, oi, oi. I forgot that guy, right? You got it. The same thing, we get involved in this world, we don't feel godliness, we don't feel anything. That's why we need the Rebbe. Is the Rebbe is a person that he does feel it, and he's trying to tell us what's really the fact. The fact is, is when we put on tefillin, there's an incredible revelation <clears throat> of godliness in the whole entire world, and especially in the person who's putting on the tefillin. <clears throat> the tefillin themselves, and the same thing with tzitzis, and the same thing with Shabbos, and the same thing with women lighting candles, and giving charity, and any of the commandments. The Eber the Eber de Montan Inyan. This what we said before, which was revealed in Matan Torah. This is also hinted at in the Ten Commandments, which the Ten Commandments were revealed in Matan Torah, which the Ten Commandments they unite the highest levels with the lowest level. The first of the Ten Commandments is Anochi, I am God. Lo Elohim Achirim. You shouldn't have any other commandments, etc. <clears throat> this expresses and and reveals the deepest ideas, the unity of Hashem. This is higher than all the Kabbalistic ideas you could possibly imagine, higher than, than anything that's mentioned in any of the Arizal books. The oneness of God, the pure essence of God, I am God. The other, the other commandments, they have very, very simple commandments. Namely what? Here we have the deepest command, the deepest idea, I am God, which the greatest tzaddikim and Kabbalists, right, just try to reach. 
the Ariz are the greatest, highest tzaddikim. Never, and in the same Ten Commandments is also another commandment. Don't kill. Don't steal. Was Zayin itself for which are understandably, this is the, <clears throat> these are things which are uh, comprehensible by any human being. Even that, whatever, the, I don't know, the Eskimos, some Aborigines, people that have never seen a light bulb, they know you're not supposed to kill. You're not supposed to steal. They know it. You don't have to have a Matan Torah to tell them that. Even without being able to read, they know these things. On the other hand, so what do we see? We see that the highest of highest, deepest, most incomprehensible idea possible, I am God, the essence of God, is who is God speaking to? He's speaking to people that you have to tell them not, don't kill. The lowest of lowest people. Unda says, Beder Ophan, and this is, that's what it means. The highest level, namely I am God, comes down to the lowest. And the lowest level, these people who are relevant, that you have to tell them, don't steal, don't cheat, don't kill, don't do adultery, don't, right? Those people, that you raise them up to the place where it's relevant that they can listen to the deepest Kabbalistic secret in the world. That's what happened in Mount, Sor, Mount, Ta- Mount, Mount Sinai. Delyoni, the highest level, the word Anochi, and Lo Yelacha, you shouldn't have any other, uh, uh, any other God, only the God that took you out of Egypt and creates the world. That's the only God you can worship. This, your Dula Tachton, it came down to the lowest levels. Then so, Arup Kakomen came down in Zich Anherin, Oichen, the Tzivoy from Lo Tirzach and Lo Tignov. The highest ideas, <clears throat> he came down to the lowest of people that you have to tell them, don't kill, don't steal. Oich in Zei, Oich in Di Mitzvahs, Vechazayin in Zelts Verstandlich. What does it mean? That even in these commandments, which are self-understood, Leuten Menschlich Verstand, according to a human understanding, Darf Zich Heru in Zei, the Gatli, Gatlich Ka Yesod Vekar. Let's just take a simple example. The German people before the German, the Japanese, before World War II, they were the most sophisticated and intelligent. And I mean, you see that the, the weapons of war that they made were excellent. They were excellent. You know, the, the, the airplanes of the Japanese and the planes, they were the, um, the best. You know, they were the best. The Germans also, they had bombs, they had the, the missiles, they had the, this, the, the, the tremendous intellect. Well, before the war, these people, especially the Germans, I'm not really acquainted at all with Japanese culture before the war, but the German culture, that was the most sophisticated and cultured nation maybe in the history of the world. Their philosophies and, and, and uh, what are they called? The, uh, the, the value systems, what are they called? The, the aesthetics, uh, uh, ethics, oh, ethics. The, 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 what is good and what is bad? By the Germans, what are you talking about? That was the highest, the, the most developed in the world, right? With Kant and Goethe and, 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 and uh, Hegel, um, amazingly deep minds. We're talking about that, uh, right? And nevertheless, there came from them because it wasn't connected to God or anything absolute. So the next day they just changed their mind and said, you know, but, but for, you know, to kill, it, 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 you never should kill, except, you know, for the country. Therefore, even in the lowest ideas has to be permeated with I am God, your God. The Rebbe said that that's maybe the only thing that we, we can really learn from the Holocaust. The only thing that we can really learn positive from the Holocaust is you can't rely on human intelligence. You can't rely on human <clears throat> emotions or, or values. Oich derem kiyom from the mitzvahs darv zayin nit blois even when a person also, when a person does the commandments, it shouldn't be because a person understands that this is a good thing. Uh, religion is a good thing. What are you talking about? For sure. No, for some people, it says no. The doing of the commandments should be mitzad zem was zayin an angizok because they were said by anochi Hashem elokecha. <clears throat> God told me to do it. I'm not just doing the commandments because it's connected to a wonderful system of Judaism that's so so complex and so uh, the, the genius people and the, the suffering the Jews don't even talk about the suffering the Jewish people suffer and I'm not going to put on the film all those things are true but the main thing with doing the commandments you're supposed to feel that God is commanding you right now Anochi, the deepest essence of the creator is telling you to this nor not more even more them darves their eager time for voice Man is Makayim, Lotir That should be the main reason why you do not kill and why you don't steal. 
not because it's not nice, not because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a mature person and I'm a cultured person. The reason you should not kill is the main reason you should not kill. And finally, that basic reason which should not be shakable is because God told me not to. The reason that I don't steal is because God said not to. Because as soon as you take God out of the picture, then all of a sudden you're going to find an excuse for you yes to kill and yes to steal. And yes to, and you'll do it for the children. You'll do it for your synagogue. You'll do it for the church. Who knows what you'll do it for? So therefore it has to be because God wants as we're going to talk, and that's what was accomplished at Mount Sinai, as we'll talk about God willing tomorrow. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Here, let's just do the Yom Yom for today. Today is what? The 18th, right? 18th day of Shvat? Let's have a look. Yes, the 18th day of Shvat. 18th day of Shvat says that Samach Tzedek told his son, the Rebbe Malash, the fourth Rebbe of Chabad, the third Rebbe of Chabad, told, the fourth told his son, the fourth Rebbe, that the Maimorim in Torah or Parshas Yitro, that's what we're learning. This is <clears throat> Parshas Yitro. This is the first Mimer that the Magid Mimezrich said when he received the, <clears throat> became the leader of the Hasidic movement in Chag Shavuot, According to what he heard from the Alta Rebbe from Menachem Mendel Mer Hardak and <clears throat> the pre Oritz, this was their but the Rebbe just explained it, the Alter Rebbe explained it according to his way. So I don't know if it's this mimer that we're learning now, or the first mimer, but these mimers are the first mimerim that were said by the Magid of Mezrich, and the Rebbe just explained it in his own language. Have a good day, everyone, with Mashiach now. So hope to see you at 3 o'clock. We'll learn Chumash with explanations. <clears throat> Yitro, who exactly was Yitro? Tune in at 3 o'clock and find out. Shalom uvracha. Have a good day, everyone. Let's see what the chat's over here. No problem. I better, better late than never, but better on time. Thank you. Have a good day. God bless you all. See you at 3 o'clock.